really cold. My family's still all asleep. I've had some coffee, did a little research so that we could get busy and surprise them with Dutch baby pancake. So what is a Dutch baby pancake? Well, it's one big pancake that you can serve to the entire family. And I've made them before, but never quite like this. So I'm excited to do this together. By the way, my name is Angela and I'm the inquisitive farm wife. I'm so glad you're here with me today as we work with our Amish friendship starter trying a new recipe. If you like from scratch meals, home preservation, animal husbandry, you've reached the right place. Welcome. Push that thumbs up, subscribe button, all the things to become part of the Farm Wife fam. Now let's get busy cooking. So first things first, I've made Dutch babies before, but I never put them in the blender. I think this is going to make the first big difference for me. As I did a little research, I found out you need that to get the airiness. And because we're using friendship starter and not flour, I really wanted to use my AER blade. I was hesitant. I didn't want to break it. It's expensive. It's new. If any of you have done that, let me know down below. I'm going to run over to the stove real quick and turn the oven up to 425 degrees. I'm a little nervous about this because this Amish friendship bread starter stuff tends to want to kind of burn. But we're going to follow the suggested recipe, which I'll have a link to where I found that down below. Oven's preheated. Now in our blender or a handheld mixer, remember in the past I've always just done it by hand. We want to do all the ingredients. So I'm going to start with our farm fresh eggs. Whoops. See now this is this is why you should get a separate bowl. <laughs> I just gathered these yesterday and I'm examining them for any sort of cracks or anything because we are getting freezing temperatures here. And sometimes the eggs will freeze, which by the way, that will not hurt you at all. It can just change the texture of your egg. And that would be perfect for baking if it did. Made a slight mess, so I had to get my hands washed. Next is a third of a cup of farm fresh milk, which I had sitting on the counter because they suggest everything being at room temperature first. We're gonna add a splash of vanilla. And a half a teaspoon of salt. You know, salt just really enhances things. And then the whole point in doing this is I'm doing this adventure with friendship bread starter. I don't know if you've seen, but I have lots of videos on it under my baking playlist. But my friend Renee, who got me started on this adventure, actually has a playlist over on her channel of all the recipes that we're both making. So double the fun. And then down below, I always add the page where I get inspiration, where lots of people have entered their favorite recipes for all of us to try. I have these two bags here because I looked up a recipe that would use two cups of starter because I'm getting ready to feed my starter again, and I didn't get I didn't get these bags used or gifted, and thought. Oh, I don't want to have to feed them and so I wanted to get them used and then this is the part that I've never done before but really should have I think this is gonna make the difference because I hear that the trick to these pancakes puffing way up is to blend them so we're gonna blend this for one minute you're gonna let this rest for maybe 10 minutes so while that oven is preheating, I'm just gonna let this sit here and rest 
and then they suggest you kind of mix it up just a little bit before you actually put it in the pan. Speaking in the pan, use cast iron. None of the recipes specify what size, so I'm just going to go with a medium one. And this particular one says to use six tablespoons. Typically, they tell you to throw this in the oven first, but this recipe suggests warming it on the stovetop. And because our Amish starter is so sensitive because of the high sugar content, I'm going to do exactly what the recipe says. So I've got my six tablespoons of butter, and once that oven's preheated, I'm going to go to the stove and I'm going to melt this butter, and then we're going to come back and put this together. The sun is rising, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and take our pan with the butter, and we're going to get it to melting. I don't have very good lighting, but I'll flip you around and show you what we got. Okay, I guess it's not so bad. The light on my microwave above me has gone out. And we, we haven't been to town to replace the bulb, but we're just going to get that butter nice and melty. And then I'll bring you back over to the counter, and we're going to pour this in and get it put in the oven. Okay, our butter. We're supposed to swirl the pan, so we're going to coat all the pan here with the butter. Get it in all the places, and it has nice and hot. We're supposed to give this one quick mix, which I'm going to do just with the spatula. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. I was expecting a little thicker <laughs> batter than this. Okay. And I could also clearly see that this pan Oh dear, this pan is not near, probably going to be very quick like. I decided to make a quick decision and get us a bigger pan to put this in. And we're just going to kind of hope for the best on how this turns out. I just warmed up some butter in the other pan. You can see it had kind of started to partially cook, but it's okay. It's okay. We're not going to give up yet. Just learn from my mistakes and it'll all be okay. So this is going to go into the oven for 10 minutes and then I'm going to turn it down to 300 degrees to finish cooking. This looks a little more promising. We shall see. Today happens to also be feed day. So I took this milk straight from the fridge. So I haven't been out to milk yet today. And I put it on for 30 seconds just to kind of take the chill out of it. Um, I wonder sometimes if that's why my starter isn't as bubbly. Although I did stir this this morning forgetting. And look at the bubbles. So I'd say it's, it's happy. And we at feed day on a regular feed, we're going to add one cup each of milk flour and sugar and it looks like I need to stop and turn the oven down to 300 degrees and we're gonna let it bake another five to ten minutes I'm just gonna kind of mix this together the best I can I do have a plastic coated whisk that if I feel like I need to get out I will I am finding that I think my starter likes it better to be not in the plastic bag like my friend Renee does and so I think I'm going to go with that. Let's see if I can find that whisk too. However, it appears to be broken, but we're going to go ahead and use it and see if I can't whisk this up. Anyway, okay, I'll pour my happy little starter in here. Oh, it's starting to smell really good. I think I just needed to put it in a bowl instead of the bag. I mean, the bag has been working, obviously. Mix this all together. Oh, yes, yes. Look at those bubbles. Can you see those? This is a happy starter. Yay. So we're going to take this lid and put it on here and set this aside. And in four more days, it'll be time to bake. It's been five minutes. Let's see what happened. Here it is, folks. 
it did bubble up some. I probably could have left it in the other one, but it is thick. I don't seem to be able to get a Dutch baby that just puffs way up because of the almond starter and the sugar around the edges it's kind of browning and I just don't want to cook this anymore and it looks like it's puffed up we did have all that extra butter in there tell you this much it smells really good and if you look it has now sunk in a bit it's pulled away from the sides and I'm gonna finish with a banana we've got some bananas still that need used so I'm gonna kind of slice those up Throw those all over the top of this. I could have mixed it in the batter. I just think it looks so pretty when the fruit is on top. And then we're gonna finish this off with some maple syrup. It's coffee infused, so maybe not for everyone, but this is what we have in the house. And I thought it would just be a little extra special for breakfast this morning. Now, doesn't that look tasty? And then cut this and have myself a lovely breakfast before tour time. Guys, have you made super fluffy Dutch baby pancakes? If you have, let me know your trick. What did you do? What could I maybe do to change this differently? Maybe the Amish starter is good for this. Maybe it's not. Let's have a conversation about it in the comments below. But for now, I'm going to have to go wake up the family so we can do a taste test. Meet you at the table. Let's give it a try. Mmm. So it's definitely very custard-like. Not super fluffy. I've never had a Dutch baby that I've gotten to fluff. So this isn't bad, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. So I think we've got more kitchen experimentation to do, friends. Thanks for being here, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. I had to come back here and show you this. I just got my first bite of the crust. Wow. The Amish starter made this caramelized-like crust. So good. So good.